Today, we're looking at Diatramentis Indigo Blue. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Diatramentis Indigo, Indigo Blue is a blue ink. And to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a Pilot Metropolitan with a medium nib to take my notes for this video. So before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography. And I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down, immediately put it in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see that this is a true blue. This is a very light blue that's all watered down as it pushes up. It gets darker and much darker across the top. A true blue, very nice. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And the only real differences I'm seeing is that line across the bottom that makes me feel that this ink has some real hold on, some staying power on paper. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pens. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it did very well until we got to that lowercase h, which it started to wash out. That makes me worried. Any loss, this is one word, any loss to the writing like that makes me worried about using it as a note taker if I was to go back and highlight. Lucky for me, I'm not a highlight type person. Water removes most of this ink, most of it. It leaves some of the light blue behind. So water may not be enough to get this out of your pen, but flush did everything water did and then some, especially when you look at it, it's a beautiful blooming that's occurring there. But when you look at the area where the white of the paper is coming through and you start to see some of the dots from the rhodia paper, this makes me feel that pen flush is all that it would take at its maximum to get this ink out of your pen. Bleach, as would be expected, removes it from the page, leaves a little bit of yellow staining behind. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity, or flow, of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Diatramentis Indigo Blue has a viscosity of 2.75. It's on the higher part of normal, but it is still absolutely normal. Now to find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Diatramentis Indigo Blue has an average dry time of 18 seconds, making it normal, still higher side of normal. The thing I love when I see this sort of thing happen is when they both come in in the same area on these bell curves, it makes me feel like this is a great testing ink to get to know a lot of different pens. I'm just not really a chase the pen person. I've got my pens that I like and I stay with them. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I picked this ink up in sample form. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at Clairefontaine. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and almost no shading, really, in it. I mean, there's a couple spots that come out and look a little bit lighter, slightly, like the I, G, beginning of G, but not really shading. The extra fine, the extra fine has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, trying to fix the focus here. It does offer little spots here and there of some darker shading. Otherwise, largely we're dealing with a standard blue. It took 12 seconds to dry. The medium had no feather, spread, halo sheen. It did offer more shading than we got with the 1.1. It did actually offer some shade. In the word quick, it's dark on the left side, gets light, gets dark again. Over, starts nice and light, gets darker progressively through the word. 
Brown is a nice dark word the whole way, which is very nice. 19 seconds to dry. The extra fine showed almost no color variation in the scrubby. The medium showed a little bit. That's about what we got in a writing sample. And the smear test says you could likely recover it if you smeared this while you were writing. So Tomoe River. Tomoe River has no bleeding. It has ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. It's very dark. The extra fine, a noticeably much lighter tone with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade, 17 seconds to dry. Now the medium, basically the same tone that we got with the extra fine. No feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, 26 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. The smear, you're not going to be able to recover if you smeared while you were writing. Rhodia. Rhodia paper gives us no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, dark blue, noticeably lighter tone with the extra fine, with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade at all in this writing. It's a nice standard blue. 14 seconds to dry. The medium had no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. We have no shading here in this. They think the only shading we really get to see is on that Clairefontaine. It took 20 seconds to dry. This is a great standard looking blue. I like that it's the same across the board in almost any nib and paper. Occasionally it's a little bit darker, like the 1.1. The scrubby for both showed us no color variation. We got no color variation. And the smear test shows we could likely recover it if we did smear while we were writing. So life paper. Life paper gave us no bleeding, no ghosting. It's a nice laid paper. with The 1.1 gave no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Same tone. It looks like it might be a little lighter. It's just the thinner lines on this paper. The thinner lines, it looks like it's lighter. It's the same. When I fold the paper over and look at it, exactly the same. The fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. It took 11 seconds to dry. The medium has exactly the same tone. Again, it looks like it's a little darker, but it's when I fold the paper over and put the writing next to each other, it's the same, and it's the same. It just looks lighter for being thinner lines. It's a trick your eye plays. The medium has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, 15 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both showed us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. The smear test you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. So Levenger paper. Levenger paper gave us no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gave no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. Slightly darker tone than we got with the extra fine. The extra fine had no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. It took 9 seconds to dry. Slightly darker, just like the 1.1. Those noises in the back. That's my dog eating his butt. Spends all his time doing that. I don't know. We go back to the slightly darker tone of the 1.1 with the medium. The medium has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. It took 13 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both showed us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. The smear test you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. So Franklin Christoph paper. Franklin Christoph paper gave us no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gave no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. Extra fine, slightly lighter tone, with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, 6 seconds to dry. The medium back to the tone with the 1.1. It's slightly darker than the extra fine. No feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, 8 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both showed us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test says you could likely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. And that is all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Diatramentus Indigo Blue, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. And I wanted a red and I wanted a brown and I couldn't decide. And I decided on Private Reserve's Vampire Red because it is really a red-brown color. It's that great dried blood, so it's nice and dark with this blue because I couldn't decide between red or brown, so that's what I went with. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Diatramentus Indigo Blue? 
I think this is a perfectly standard, well-behaved blue. And if you like blue inks, I think this is a great blue to use. To me, this particular one is actually kind of up there with Waterman Blue, which is one of my favorites. This is a very good, predictable in how it works blue. And the things like the viscosity and the dry times make it even better to use for testing out a new pen to you. Thanks for watching.